Hey, what's up guys? The Raging Shadow here, and in this video I'm going to be giving you my thoughts so far on Mass Effect Andromeda. If you don't know yet, EA and Bioware have allowed members of EA Access and Origin Access to play the game early for a 10 hour trial. Also, to let you know, I did play the game on PC. I did get frame rate drops, but that should be fixed by the time the drivers by NVIDIA roll out by the time the game comes out. As well, I do plan on doing a full-on review sometime a week after this game comes out, where I'll go more in-depth with the game and what we'll basically overall think about it. So make sure to subscribe and keep a lookout for that. To first start with the animal in the room, yes. If you've been keeping up with this game, you know the facial animations are horrendously bad. Like the first Mass Effect game from 2007 has better facial animations than this game does. It's a joke, and I still can't believe Bioware is clueless on how to do better. But I'm not going to let that affect my thoughts on the game, because I don't cry about small stuff like most people, saying the game is completely ruined because of it. I can grow up and get over it, accept it, and wait until either Bioware or Mod fixes it. So first off, looking at the character creator. Yeah, uh, it kinda sucks. I mean, granted, it's a small improvement over the trilogy's character creator, but it still could have been so much better. You're basically stuck with like 9 different head options that you just have to mess around with after you select one and to create your character. One of the biggest things I was hoping for about this game was that the character creator was indeed a far better improvement over the original trilogy. This isn't the case, unfortunately. I mean, it's not terrible, but eh, I wish it could have. I wish they had put more time into it. Gameplay wise, I could say that this game feels entirely different from what the past Mass Effect games were. As much as I love the original trilogy and the gameplay, comparing it to this game, it's obvious the trilogy was a lot more stiffer when it came to movement and gunfire. Shepard and the team moved sort of always in a straight line. They weren't fast and completely free to roam wherever, like you can in this game. It was for the most part a cover shooter. Andromeda expands on that by offering a lot more free roam and more flexibility movability in the game. This is all helped by the jump jet given to you at the start of the game that allows you to jump over buildings, cover, and basically helps you get into better positions on the field. Abilities feel powerful and fluent, whether you're a biotic, a technician, or full-on soldier. The use of your abilities, how you combo them or use them, is up to you. Now this is where the game mixes it up a bit. Thanks to your AI friend, Sam, your rider player can now switch between class sets and game, from biotic to engineer, or to technician complete with your, their own movesets, depending on how you level up and where you put your skill points, obviously. This allows for a lot more freedom of how a player wants to play. It doesn't completely limit them to one class the whole game. Squad mates are back in the game as well, but it feels a lot more limited than what the original trilogy had. You can no longer issue commands to your squad mates to use certain abilities. You can, however, keep telling them what cover positions to use or where to go. Still, each member does come with their own abilities and classes, and you do still get to level them up. Now for the Nomad. The Nomad was the biggest thing shown off throughout trailers and such for this game, because it was supposed to be a vast improvement over what the Mako was in the first Mass Effect game. If you ever played the first Mass Effect, you know how terrible the Mako was, from controls to overall use of exploring uninteresting plants with no real depth to them. Bioware fixes this by making the Nomad feel a lot more responsive and needable. The plans you get to explore in the trial requires you to use this vehicle to get around a large area, from buildings to tall ancient structures across the desert terrain. Now it has no weapons like the original Mako did, so you kinda have to rely on either making your enemies roadkill, or pulling off to the side and shooting them. Because early on your Mako cannot take much damage before being blown the hell up, so I would advise for the early part of the game pulling over. The different modes on the Nomad allow you to drive up steep hills that would be difficult in normal drive mode to get up or use your engine boost to drive faster across the area. With dialogue choices, the famous Paragon Renegade system from the original trilogy has been removed, and I honestly have no problem with that. I always wasn't a fan of the whole Paragon Renegade thing. Why should my choice and why I get the same matter to a bar that indicates I haven't been playing Paragon or Renegade enough to make this choice? Don't worry, you still do get your choice interruptions like you would with the trilogy system where with a click of the button you could take an action having to do with the two. It just won't be added to any dialogue bar this time, and for good reason. The dialogue wheel goes a Dragon Age Inquisition route, where what you can say will be marked with a symbol having to do with either professional, flirt, casual, and so forth type choices. It does tend to add a lot more responses to what you can say other than a Paragon Renegade choice, like in the trilogy, but I don't think the whole Inquisition system should have been the dialogue designed to go into this game. 
With only 10 hours playing the game, there's not much you can say about everything this game has, because you barely scratch the surface. So I will be saving topics like space, exploration, the story, the tempest, crafting, and just about everything else the game has for the full review. This is of course just early hands-on impressions. I know this is a short video, but like I said, there's only so much you can do in 10 hours, and I want to save everything for my full-on review of the game. So, thank you guys for watching my early thoughts on of the game. If you agree or disagree, leave a comment in the comments below. Leave a like or a dislike, it doesn't matter to me. And be sure to subscribe to keep a lookout for more videos such as the review. Peace.